Hi, I just got two of these Elgato key lights uh, for my desktop uh, recording. These will uh, light up my face when I do my talking uh, Dave head, like screen capture uh, type stuff. And well, it's a nice bit of kit. It's a uh, just under 200 Yankee bucks each. So they're not the uh, cheapest key lights out there, but basically what a key light is, is basically to light up uh, the subject that's on camera. That's just the industry term key light. And I guess, I don't know. Uh, yeah, they've got no trademark. You can't really trademark the term key light, I guess, because it's an industry uh, term. Anyway, it's not the cheapest out there, but it feels like a quality bit of kit. So I thought we'd just do a quick teardown of this. Now you can see the specs here, 2900 Kelvin to 7000 Kelvin, so adjustable colour temperature. In my lab here, I've got all my lights uh, set to 5000 Kelvin. It's also high CRI as well, 92% uh, colour rendering uh, index. You want that uh, to reproduce good colours. Uh, not uh, quite as good as um, what I use, what I'm actually shooting either side of my camera at the moment, in addition to my overhead lights. Um, well, I'm using, I'd normally be using two of these, and I will in a minute. Um, these are Aperture Amaran uh, HR672Cs. I think they're technically discontinued now, but once again, these are adjustable uh, color temperature, and I think these will do like 4800 lumens or something like that. Um, these ones are 2800 lumens. There is a smaller version of this available, I believe, but I've got the uh, larger one. So anyway, it's got on, off, and uh, reset. I thought when I first looked at this, I didn't see reset. I just saw that it's got the um, the two symbol on there. So I thought, oh, okay, uh, you know, low light level and high light level. But nope, nope, <laughs> that's just a generic um, switch. They didn't bother getting that changed. So <laughs> they just used it, even though the two's not really appropriate there for the reset. Anyway, a uh, 13 volt, four amp plug pack jobby. And it's a, um, a really nice bit of kit. It feels really good. The heatsink fins and the anodized aluminium uh, frame with an uh, aluminium backing as well. None of that aluminum uh, rubbish. And uh, as you can see on the front here, it's actually all the leads are around the outside and then they point inwards like this. So it's actually, you get a nice diffuse uh, look like that. Because if I use um, these, which I currently do, I currently like move one of these uh, just in front of me when I shoot my talking head uh, videos. And these these are direct LEDs that come out. It's got a kind of a kind of sorta little bit of uh, diffusing on the front, but these are very like harsh, and they actually create a more harsh uh, light than you'll get with like a really nicely diffused um, thing like this with the LEDs coming in at the side. So hopefully um, these will be like less harsh on my eyes, and uh, hopefully create kind of like less harsh shadows, but I, I don't think there's probably much in it. We'll see. Anyway, anyway, it does feel like a good solid bit of kit for your 200 US dollars. So you can actually get much uh, cheaper lights, but yeah, these are like a lot of the gamer kitties use these. Anyway, let's crack it open. And here's the war wart for you uh, plug pack aficionados, uh, made by uh, Shenzhen Zinpower Technology Co. Um, I assume that's like a inline ferrite, I don't know. Anyway, it's got all the requisite uh, standards and everything. They've probably got slightly above average uh, quality here, and, you know, for the money. It's not like you're buying some cheapo no-namer. So Elgato is actually a division of uh, Corsair Memory. So they're in uh, Fremont, California, but uh, Corsair is actually um, in the Netherlands. So hi to all my viewers in the nether regions. Made in Taiwan, none of that made in China rubbish, you little ripper. So obviously we're going to have all our driver stuff in here. So let's whip that out. Let's lift that off. There you go. Oh, we're in. There you go. Some big power resistors. Oh, wow. And yep, of course, this has uh, the newfangled uh, Wi-Fi rubbish that, uh, yeah, you hook these lights up. So there's no controls on here. This is the thing. There's only like on, off and uh, reset. So yeah, I would have preferred to like just have the color control and the controls on the back. But anyway, this is all designed to go into the app and you can get those Elgato um, touch, desktop touch light uh, thing, buttony things, you know, hot button things, whatever they're called, I don't know. And um, yeah, you can control your lights that way or via an app or via the PC or whatever. Well, it's exactly what you'd expect in here. We've got our uh, processor, which is our wireless LAN chip and our uh, LED, PWM LED driver. For the processor and wireless, we've got a single chip solution, which is a Realtek RTL 8711, which is part of the Amoeba series um, system on chip. It's designed for your internet of things grown. Um, and this is a Cortex uh, M3 and it's got, uh, of 
course, uh, the wireless uh, LAN and all the RF and everything uh, built into that. And uh, is that our little antenna over there? So, yeah, not much doing. And they've done that as a separate board. I don't know if you can buy this whole thing as a module. You might be able to. I don't know. In that case, they just plonked it in there. Otherwise, they're um, just uh, taking the functionality of that, putting it on a separate board so that uh, helps when, you know, you don't have to respin this main board if for some reason you want to change your processor or you can't get the right part or something like that and, you know, you just need to uh, change your product around. You can do that without respinning. But anyway, yeah, so Cortex M3, more than enough. It's got um, internal, uh, like, hardware security and stuff like that. I don't know how secure these lights are. You could probably, you know, hack into someone's uh, lights or network and flash their lights in their um, studio or something while their gamer kid is live streaming. That'd be cool if any... Has anyone heard of that happening? Where, a, like, a streamer's been like going and somebody like flashes morse code on their on their key lights in front of them that'd be hilarious anyway that'd be a great hack then for our lead driver we've got a pca 9632 uh, that's a uh, 16 channel i squared c uh driver and like eight bits for um each lead so you can drive each lead up to uh like totem pole output 25 uh, milliamps for the 16 leads up to eight bit uh, pwm resolution on those because these things are continuously uh adjustable and of course um, uh, when we tear down the rest of it, we're probably going to see like uh, two different uh, color LEDs in there. There will be, and then they just mix those. Um, they, these things won't have full RGB color LEDs in them. They will just be like a uh, dual color thing and they mix them uh, to get the different uh, color temperatures. That's how my Aperture Amaran uh, lights work and many others. Anyway, apart from that, it looks like we've got uh, four strings here um, with eight, uh, with uh, two series resistors, I guess, in each each um, string like that. Although why they need uh, 5 watt uh, dropper resistors in there for the lead string when I don't see... Oh yeah, 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 there we go. I was going to say, um, <laughs> there's our extra... It looks like they're not using the internal ones. It looks like uh, the internal totem pole drivers for only 25 milliamps. It looks like they're using these little external um, SO23 jobbies. Those things are um, absolutely wimpy for what is this, uh, like 50 watts, uh, over 50 watts uh, total or something. So, yeah, I don't know. I'll take the board out, see if there's anything on the bottom, but I don't think so. Nope, absolutely nothing on the bottom. Single-sided load jobby, so... That's it. That's all she wrote. Um, yeah, we've got uh, uh, dropper string resistors like that and um, the, the little SO23 uh, um, external power transistors. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure they're not cheaping out. They've done their calculations and they're dropping um, all the power in the power resistor there instead of the power transistor uh, driver. So yeah, four channels make sense because you would have a strip on the top and bottom and left and right. I assume left and right would have uh, fewer LEDs than the others. Anyway, these claim to have Osram uh, LEDs in them. They branded on the front, um, proudly got Osram uh, quality LEDs in them. So yeah, uh, let's take it apart and we'll just see four different strips. That's it. And for you capacitor brand aficionados, um, stone. Ugh. Yeah, nah. And by the way, they have paid uh, attention to detail, of course. We've got a uh, thread in the top and bottom and also in the side if you want to mount it vertical as well so it doesn't matter which orientation you want i'll actually probably mount mine upside down because i want to physically access the switch and it's pain to reach under so it's easier for me to reach over these lights and uh, go down like that so yeah i'll mount mine upside down so yeah that's a nice touch and because some people want to see the wanky pattern they've etched into this thing uh, it's kind of groovy well, I was wrong, wasn't I? Um, no, they've got two strips. They've got one strip, you notice, that starts over here like this, and then goes bendy, 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 because you can actually bend PCBs if you get them thin enough. This is an aluminium-backed uh, one, of course, and we'll check... Ooh, look at that. Now that's a bit how you're doing. Anyway, talk about that in a second, and it ends over here. So... There you go. Um, that's one strip, and then the other one is in the top half of it. Now, here's where it's a bit how you're doing. There's our LEDs down in there, and nice aluminium-backed PCB that they're on to get the heat out, and they're just leaving that flapping around in the breeze. So that's just got to, like, radiate from, <laughs> from the back of the strip to 
the, uh, you know, very nice uh, finned heatsink that it got around the outside. So, they get, like, the thermal um, resistance of this gap here is absolutely enormous. So that's, I, that's terrible. I expected, I expected thermal adhesive to the back of there. Un, like, unbelievable. Have they done it anywhere? Nope. No, they haven't done it anywhere. It's just like, sure, if, you know, tension on that actually, you know, pushes out and you've got some sort of contact on there, but yeah, nah. Um, disappointed by that. So the actual, uh, the die on the LEDs, that's actually going to heat up more than it should if they could effectively couple and reduce the thermal resistance. I've done a whole video on thermal resistance and, uh, and l looking at it from an electrical analogy. Um, it's a really good video. I'll link it in. Very old, but very good. Um, and how, like, no, 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 no. Oh, actually, I was wrong again. It's actually one large strip. It's just that the brake is over here, like this, on this side, but this side over here is, well, it's one physically large PCB strip. Wow, that is absolutely enormous. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, um, they do have a mix of LEDs down here, and this is how they get the color. You can see that they've got 6,500 Kelvin and 3,000 Kelvin LEDs on there, two different uh, colors, and they mix those, they PWM uh, the two of those to get any of the color in the range. But there you go. So electrically, it's not one big string, but it is actually one big string according to <laughs> like the PCB. So anyway, yeah, that just pops out. Look, look, the whole thing's just popped out now. There is definitely, there is no <laughs> thermal adhesive on the back of that at all. It's just one big strip. Unbelievable. All right, so let's have a look at the diffuser here. And yep, just what I thought. It's just one big thick acrylic piece with uh, like a like diffuser material on it. Um, no, they actually add. Oh, okay, that is actually patterned in there as well. That's actually patterned on the back as well. And um, I'll have to link in some videos uh, where I've discussed that, um, I'm sure. So yeah, they've actually got the design pretty funky there. So there's actually more technology than just an acrylic in there. They've got the uh, patterned backing which helps uh, diffuse and scatter the light out the front. So yeah, that's pretty groovy. So it's basically, um, what, four major pieces. We've got the um, aluminium bracket like that. Then this just sits in here like this. And then they just bring in this and they just bend it around. I'm sure they're flat at the factory. And then somebody just bends them. Bit how you doing? And they just... <laughs> I just manipulate that into position. That's actually a little bit tricky. I can probably see why they don't use thermal adhesive because it's just like, it's just tricky to do, I guess. So I think you've got to get one end down first and then the other end. Brr. Yeah, so it looks like they're going to have one strip in there for the orange ones and one strip in there for those yellow ones, the uh, channel, and then they would split those into uh, two halves, which is why they need the four channels. Otherwise, uh, you need too much uh, compliance voltage to make that work. Bloody white solder mask. Anyway, if I tilt that the right angle, you might eventually see the traces in there. So whilst I think like the build quality of this is like the outside build quality and everything is excellent, I'm sure they uh, perform absolutely brilliantly, <laughs> pun intended, I'm here all week. Um, yeah, I, oh, just, yeah, just the lack of, somebody could have gone around with a snot gun and just, like, at least put, at least attempted, maybe, um, to put some, you know, some thermal gunk around the outside of that. Um, but then, I guess, uh, uh, but then you've got to, like, you risk it getting in here and it's all messy and it's an extra step process, and I guess, um, they, you know, uh, maybe they've done their uh, measurements and the LEDs aren't getting that hot and just the radiation from the uh, LED strips is like enough to come out here. I'm, you know, these are like, I'm sure these would have been engineered fairly well. So, you know, like if I was designing this, I would have had like a temp probe on the uh, LEDs themselves and actually uh, bring that out um, so that once you've uh, sealed it up and everything, um, then I drill a hole in the back, do whatever, um, and then get some leads out from 
for a little temp probe to see how hot the leads in there are actually getting uh, compared uh, with the outside because the actual die temperature um, is going to get pretty high and that's going to reduce the life of your leads. Um, I don't know if that's, you know, going to have a huge impact, but the way I would have expected um, some thermal bond in there. That's all. And well, there you go. It lights up. And I haven't connected these things via Wi Fi, so I got no idea. Well, you reset it. There you go. That's brighter. And then you turn it on and it goes on and off and then should go back on, hopefully. No, yep, there it is. Yeah, it faded up there. Um, and yeah, the pattern is like very nice. I can see a slight shadow over there, but apart from that, um, yeah, it's brilliant. <laughs> Pun intended. So anyway, that is better than uh, these. This is a smaller version of the uh, Aperture Amaran um, that I've got. I use these for a little task uh, lighting. Once again, adjustable color. That's overexposed though. To see the dual colors in there. There you go. If I adjust the color, you can see how that changes the color based on, because uh, this is right down at zero, unfortunately. Um, otherwise it just looks way too bright. On camera, it's hard to catch LEDs on camera, but there you go. Hopefully, you can see the color change like that. And uh, these Elgato ones um, work exactly the same way. It's just less harsh. So yeah, these are because like as a creator, you've got to stare into these bloody things, or at least like they're at the side of you and they're lighting up your uh, face. And I've got two because you want to light uh, like evenly from both sides, and then they also light up uh, your green screen um, in the background as well and stuff. And yeah, you want them bright, but not too bright that you get absolutely blinded by it and you're squinting um, when you're talking into the uh, camera. So anyway, I think these are uh, decent quality for your 200 bucks. I don't know about the app thing, but everyone uses these. I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're pretty good. Um, and it's a decent brand. So yeah, don't buy it like cheap LED lights. Um, just at least get like a decent name brand LED lights. They're just more better. Anyway, if you like that little teardown, please give it a big overexposed thumbs up. And as always, discuss down below. Catch you next time.